Well, as the take-up date for the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement draws closer, Nigeria, the most populous country in Africa with around 200 million people, among few other countries, is yet to ratify the agreement. The Minister of Trade and Investment, Mr. Ni Adebayo, said Nigeria is currently in the process of securing approval to ratify the African Continental Free Trade Agreement soon. Meanwhile, members of organized private sector and international trade experts have lamented the lack of preparedness by countries within the African sub-region for the takeoff of the agreement. Well, the Secretary General of the AFS, AFCTA, uh, Secretariat, His Excellency Mr. Wamkele Mene, is in the country to meet with the Nigerian authorities and he joins us this morning to give us an update on the level of preparedness of African countries towards the takeoff of the trade deal. Good morning, Your Excellency. Thank you for joining us on the show. Now, are, are, we, are we certain that come January 1, the AFCTA will kick off as planned, irrespective of the challenges of COVID-19? Um, yes, we have to proceed with uh, implementation uh, of uh, the, the AFCFTA, and particularly the trading date that was postponed uh, uh, by the heads of states. You and I discussed that in detail the last time I was on your show. And the heads of states have made it clear that this time around, we are going to proceed as planned for the 1st of January, 2021. And already preparations are underway uh, for, the, for the outstanding negotiations to, to be concluded by, uh, by the end of the year. Now, you have been meeting with Nigerian authorities. How ready is the country to ratify this agreement? I've been very encouraged by uh, the, the interactions I've had thus far with uh, the authorities in Nigeria. Um, as you said, the minister announced yesterday that Nigeria is in advanced stages of uh, making preparations for, for ratification. Of course, we understand that every country has uh, its own uh, legal requirements uh, for undertaking ratification of an international instrument, and those have to be respected. Uh, but I am very encouraged by, by uh, what the, um, the minister told me yesterday in our meeting, uh, which signifies uh, that Nigeria um, is uh, very committed to the AFCFTA and that Nigeria is uh, ready to take its rightful leadership place in the AFCFTA as one of the strong pillars um, in, um, in the economy of, um, of Africa. And I certainly look forward to, um, to the day on which uh, Nigeria will be able to deposit uh, the instrument of ratification. Now, how many countries so far have ratified the agreement aside from Nigeria now? Have countries such as Algeria uh, or energy exporter Angola ratified yet? Um, no, not yet. Uh, and incidentally, this morning I had uh, discussions with the authorities of the government of Angola. Um, that is a country that I intend to visit also in, in the near future uh, to see if there are any interventions that we may be required uh, to make as a secretariat to enable uh, Angola to, to rapidly uh, um, uh, ratify uh, the agreement and of course any other country that may need um, our intervention or our assistance uh, to, uh, to move the process of ratification forward. Um, uh, Tanzania is also a very important uh, uh, player, uh, um, important market in East Africa uh, that has not yet ratified. Uh, but I must stress that of course countries, countries have different legal requirements for ratification, we have to respect those, uh, but at the same time, where we can, we want to move speedily towards ratification so that this agreement reaches universality um, in Africa and so that ultimately all 55 uh, countries in Africa are state parties to this agreement. Now, aside from the issue of ratification, what are the other outcome of your meeting with the Nigerian Authority? Well, we agreed uh, that we will work together. We will collaborate uh, the uh, African Continental Free Trade Area Secretariat 
and the government of Nigeria will collaborate to work on a range of very important issues, uh, the fight against uh, transshipment of products, building the institutional capacity of the um, African Continental Free Trade Area Secretariat uh, itself, um, improving the participation of, um, of women in trade, opening opportunities for small medium enterprises, opening opportunities for, for young people uh, in trade. All of these things uh, we discussed and we agreed that uh, we're going to collaborate and work together uh, because we share objectives. We have common objectives about Africa's economic development. We have common objective, uh, uh, objectives about Africa's uh, uh, trade tra trajectory and how we should boost intra-Africa trade in terms of industrial development, large-scale manufacturing, productive capacity. All of these things we definitely share with the authorities and the government of Nigeria. And I look forward to working with the government of Nigeria to ensure that we, we put an action plan in place that will advance uh, these objectives. Now, the rules of um, origin remained a significant instrument in the success of the AFCTA. And uh, this has been the biggest worry about AFCTA. Where are you in ensuring compliance to rule of origin? And what framework is in place to ensure compliance? There, there is some, some work that still has to be done on, uh, on rules of origin. Um, the latest development is that uh, at, uh, at a technical level, the work is about 85% done. It is ongoing work that uh, they are doing virtually because of COVID-19. Um, we expect that uh, this work must be concluded. It must be done in accordance with the directives of uh, the Assembly of Heads of States so that trading can take place uh, from the 1st of January 2021. Now, rules of origin is very important, um, very important for, for Africa's industrial development and very, very important for the prevention of, uh, of transshipment of goods, uh, for the prevention of uh, fraudulent invoicing and a range of other uh, customs related uh, and customs administration uh, related challenges. Uh, so we've got to make sure that we, we are very deliberate about this work and that we conclude it. That is the mandate of the heads of states. Um, the, the, the agreement is, is, um, is aimed at boosting intra-Africa trade. And so if the rules of origin regime that we have is not sufficiently, if the threshold is not high enough, that um, it fosters industrialization in Africa, it becomes a futile exercise. And so it's very, very important that um, we enforce the rules of origin that we will ultimately agree to. And second, that we build the capacity of our customs authorities uh, to enforce the new rules, because there will be new rules, to enforce the new rules of the African continental free trade area, the new rules of origin. And this is going to be a significant challenge. Uh, it is already a, uh, um, a, a very comprehensive uh, agreement. And so uh, individual countries will have um, to build their capacity. We will work with them, of course, to build the capacity of the customs authorities uh, to do all of these things that I've just mentioned, of fighting uh, uh, um, the problem of transshipment. Now, in your meeting with the Nigerian government, part of what you talked about is um, trade dispute resolution. The AFCTA Secretariat is based in Ghana, and I'm sure you are aware of the recent squabble between the two countries where Nigerian businesses in Ghana are being closed for allegedly not meeting with some laws. What is the position of the AFCTA Secretariat on this? Well, our position is that um, the agreement, uh, the AFCFTA has rules, uh, and those rules have been accepted uh, by countries that have ratified the agreement. And so they establish uh, uh, rights and obligations on both sides. And, um, and we, we believe that uh, the rules uh, have to be applied as agreed to. I do not know the details of, um, of the, the, uh, the, the uh, misunderstanding or dispute between Nigeria and Ghana. 
And since I do not know the details, um, I, I would be well advised not to comment too much about it beyond saying that um, the AFCFTA is about uh, rules of the game. Um, it is about establishing a single set of rules for trade and investment in the African continent. And we expect that all countries that have ratified the agreement will adhere and live up to their commitments um, that they have made. Um, I also have not been approached by, uh, um, by either government um, and uh, we did not discuss it uh, yesterday with the authorities um, of, Ghana, of Ghana, Nigeria, my apologies. We, we did not discuss that issue. Um, it seems to me that for now the matter is being dealt with at a bilateral level. And I, I am sure that um, if both governments, um, if they deem that my intervention may be required at some point, I'm sure that they will, um, they will approach me. But at this point, it seems that uh, it is a matter that uh, both governments are, are attending to at a bilateral level. And of course, we would want to see a, set, a mutually satisfactory outcome um, uh, because uh, this is a very serious issue for both countries. And uh, both countries are members of ECOWAS. Both countries are members of the African Union. And therefore, um, we, we, we expect that the, ma the matter will be resolved amicably and in a manner um, that uh, upholds the, spirits, the spirit of the AFCFTA and, of course, upholds uh, the rules of the AFCFTA. Now, how are you uh, dealing with the issue of uh, protectionism and, of course, the COVID-19 experience that have um, disrupted global supply chains? The matter of protectionism is, is not new. It has not arisen as a result of um, COVID-19. I think COVID-19, of course, accentuated it. Um, it uh, exacerbated uh, the problem, but it has always been there. If you look at uh, the so-called trade wars between China and uh, um, the United States and how that has negatively impacted on the rest of the world and the rest of the global economy, whether you are talking about uh, its adverse effects on capital markets or you are talking about its impact on um, the, the uh, um, co primary commodities market, causing um, uh, global commodities markets to be subdued. Trade tensions, trade protectionism have this impact on the global economy. But I am very encouraged because what we've seen is that as tensions rise, as trade tensions rise, as countries increase uh, trade protectionism around the world, Africa has been doing the, the opposite. Uh, through the AFCFTA, we have been reducing intra-Africa uh, barriers to trade. The, the agreement is very clear. We intend to reduce barriers to intra-Africa investment. We intend to eliminate uh, non-tariff barriers um, that hold back and constrain uh, investment and growth and trade. We have a mechanism in place uh, to uh, eliminate non-tariff barriers. And of course, we are going to significantly reduce um, tariffs uh, amongst ourselves to, to zero in over 90% of products by the 15th year, starting from next year onwards. Um, and so our, the direction that Africa has taken is that of uh, uh, the, the opposite of where the rest of the world was going. It has been to, uh, as I say, to reduce intra-Africa barriers to trade, whether they are investment or non-tariff barriers. Our intention is that by the year 2035, we have doubled intra-Africa trade. You cannot have a, a doubling of intra-Africa trade from the 15, 16% where it stands today. You cannot have doubling of intra-Africa trade if you have protectionism in place. It is simply not going to happen. And therefore, we've got to be very aggressive about implementing this agreement, particularly as it, require, it requires us to reduce barriers to intra-Africa trade, to reduce tariffs and to reduce uh, non-tariff measures 
that, um, that are in place across a range uh, of countries. Nigeria dramatically closed off its uh, borders with neighbors last August, a move that is said uh, aimed at preventing smuggling, but the step was said to have been uh, carried out unilaterally and breached free trade agreements among ECOWAS members. What implications will this have on the AFCTA? Well, once again, the, the agreement on the rules is clear. Um, we, we, um, we, our role as a secretariat is to ensure that um, uh, 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 the rules are applied and are implemented by each state party um, and that the rights and obligations are applied and implemented about each state party. So any matter that arises uh, between state parties, any dispute or potential dispute must be resolved in accordance with the rules. Uh, that we have agreed to. And so the, the, one of the, uh, the, the very positive factors about this agreement is that it, for the first time, it establishes a platform for a pan-African platform for the resolution of disputes amicably without having to go to national courts. And so to the extent that a, a dispute or a potential dispute arises, uh, the agreement establishes the, the, uh, the channels for how such a dispute will be resolved. Uh, and this is something that investors are looking forward to very much to because it offers them an opportunity for an efficient resolution of any disputes that, um, that may arise. And so we will take every matter on its merits, every dispute on its merits, every potential dispute on its merits and apply the rules and, uh, and hopefully we can have an outcome that all parties uh, will, be, will be willing to accept. Um, this is the future that we have to take uh, in Africa for, uh, for enhancing uh, intra-Africa investment and for enhancing uh, investment confidence in, in, um, in Africa. Now, considering the planned takeoff of this um, AFCTA by January 1, do you think uh, it's time for Nigeria to actually open up its borders because um, uh, uh, investors here in the country, business uh, uh, people here in the country are calling for the reopening of the border. What's your take? Do you think it's time for Nigeria to open up this border? Well, I think the, the Nigerian authorities will make a, an assessment uh, uh, and, uh, and then make a determination about when to, uh, uh, to open the borders. Um, I know that uh, uh, um, Nigeria is aware of um, its obligations in respect of neighbors uh, arising from the, uh, from the ECOWAS uh, agreement. And also, um, when Nigeria does become a state party, also from obligations that arise from the, uh, from the AFCFTA. And so I, I, uh, I am encouraged um, by the fact that uh, Nigeria is acutely aware of uh, what has to be done um, and what measures have to be taken in order to, to open the borders. So the customs authorities, the, the government of, 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 uh, of Ghana, I am sure at the, I'm sorry, of Nigeria, I live in Ghana, that's why I keep making <laughs> reference to Ghana. Um, but the authorities of um, uh, uh, Nigeria uh, should be given the space uh, to make the assessment that they need to make um, uh, so that they can be in a position to, uh, to open the borders. What I would say is that it is absolutely vital, it is absolutely critical um, that Africa's largest uh, economy becomes the leverage for um, for greater and enhanced uh, uh, a greater and an enhanced intra-Africa trade um, agenda starting from January 2021, uh, being the largest economy. I think uh, 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 Nigeria has a leading role uh, to play in boosting intra-Africa trade, and so we look forward. As I said earlier, we look forward to the opportunity when uh, Nigeria will be a state party to the AFCFTA. All right, thank you very much uh, for your time. Um, Mr. Wamkele Mene, thank you for your time in our studio. Thank you very studio. much, thank you for inviting me.
Yeah, Mr. Wamkele Mene is the Secretary General of the Africa Continental Free Trade Area Secretariat. We'll do a break now and when we come back, we do an opening call to London as well as look at the local market here. Just stay with us. Mm -hmm.